right, last but not least, we have the finals for Duels of Rune Terror 12. Great decks. Obviously, thank you to the players. Thank you to everybody who uh, was, you know, joined us for the cast in the chat, chatting it up, trolling it up, whatever it is you do in the chat. <laughs> but always appreciate all the participation. Also, shout out to the TOs, uh, Kuma. We got all, all sorts of people helping out with this tournament. Team Liquid, obviously, for sponsoring. They are who are able to provide the prize pool for us, which is sort of cool because this is a free, yes, free event. Week in and week out, every single time this tournament happens. So shout out to Team Liquid as well as Decks of Rune Terra. So pretty awesome, and I've mentioned this multiple times before. Seeing this community grow to the point that it is at now, as far as the competitive scene, the tournament scene. So enough of all the thank yous. We have the finals, and for the finals, we have Winding God versus Zinc. Zinc battled his way through the top cut, going to five games for every single series he played. So damn, has it been a long run for him? Winding God having 3-0'd his top four opponent. Again, Winding God's decks, uh, we went over with the first game that we saw him in in round nine, which was versus Nola Gold. So if you want to go ahead and check that game out, link will be in the description below. And as far as Type V is concerned, we have another pretty typical lineup in Lucian, Misfortune, Bannerman. But his take on Darrowing is a little bit different as he's only wanting Run Darius. Yes, count it, one. And Elise is his other champion of choice, uh, you know, adding a little bit more Shadow Isles cards in there. And for his final deck, we have the one, the only, Ezreal Karma. We did end up going to five games for this one, so definitely some pretty high-level play here in this game. Without further ado, I give you yet another final with the one and only Winding God in it versus Zinc Elemental. Are getting into game one as we speak so i'm gonna pull that over sounds good so yeah we're getting started off here with the pilfer deck versus the scout well not really a scout deck it's more of the bannerman sort of misfortune deck out of zinc elemental god always right before finals huh that's when everything's <laughs> gotta go wrong All right, there we go. Match score, 0-0. Zero, zero. Game one of finals. Zinc Elemental versus Winding God. That was a close one, guys, but we made it. We are back. We are here. And, uh, yeah, we got the Misfortune Sejuani versus the Scout deck. And the Moose is already loose in this first hand here. I thought you were so far ahead of me that, like, there were there was already a Moose on the field. I'm like, I'm over here on turn three. How did that come out already? <laughs> nope. Oh, these these Corsairs, man. These have these crack shot Corsairs have been playing out really well for the players that have been able to randomly generate them. And the second uh God not Dreadway Deckhand. Hired gun out of uh Winding God isn't actually gonna play super well because there is a war chef on the side of Zinc Elemental. Did I miss the petty officers in this list? I did miss the petty officers in this list. Oh yeah, they are here. And the Petty Officer is actually going to get tagged with the Vulnerable by this Hired Gun. Uh, we are going to see the attack come through with the War Chefs as well as that Petty Officer, which is going to put that Petty Officer outside of range of being blocked uh, for a good trade uh, with anything right now. So very good play by Zinc Elemental. They're going up real quick on damage uh, versus Winding God here in round one. Yeah, but Winding God finding the better sort of Bilgewater card that summons a one-drop, turns it into a scout as well, even manages to pull the elusive Poro off of it, and thanks to the Hired Gun, is going to be able to kill the Petty Officer. Zinc Elemental looks like he's going to have the Ranger's Resolve to at least prevent the death of his Petty Officer this turn, and that's not, you know, a huge mana commitment. You know, he's still going to have quite a few things that he can do this turn. Uh, a little, you would have liked to save that for maybe a Misfortune play, as your board is now pretty set up and vulnerable to something like that, uh, but, you know, it's not going to be too big of a concern here. Winding God going to be okay losing one of his units as he does have this hired gun, or not hired gun, the second copy of, uh, gosh, her name is <laughs> yeah, Genevieve. Oh, no, no, no. What are you talking? Oh, oh, oh hired gun. Oh, Island Navigator. Okay. Yeah, dude, we're all getting lost in the sauce here a little bit. Words. Sorry, the technical difficulties have thrown our brains for a loop. The hamsters also need to start running again. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, going to go ahead and pull. Uh, the Petty Officer with the Hired Gun. Going to go ahead and open attack with every... Or not open attack. I always do that. You do that a lot. 
I do that uh, a lot. I've been working on it. I've yeah, been working on it. I, I've definitely gotten better on it as well, but I feel like everybody just uses the term open attack just for the sake of using the term open attack. Yeah, every time I see an attack, I'm like, that's an open attack. And I'm like, that's not what that means. Um, um, one thing I do want to touch on, Winding God, this elusive part is actually really big because it does mean that Winding God is set up for a Citrus Courier on turn six, guaranteed, if that is the kind of play that he wants to go for. The Moose is now on the loose from Zinc Elemental, though, and that is going to be a little bit of a problem for Winding God. He could just throw out, looks like he is going to consider this, just put out that fury of the north as his you know sort of way to deal with that not going to let this eat up too much of his board and that means the crack shot's only going to push one damage to zinc elemental now out of mana and rangers the yeah, rangers resolve won't save him from this one looks like he's considering the single combat to take out the hired gun maybe the elusive poro does go for the elusive poro understanding that these constant plunder triggers is not something he wants to give winding god access to and we're gonna see the attack with the fury of the north uh, and wow, okay, so this is gonna go ahead and kill the loose moose. <laughs> and, I, and now I just like saying that. Um, yeah, and why Derelicta says, Are you a little bit ahead of me now? Uh, no, I'm just really good at reading. Uh <laughs> I've actually had situations in cast where people are like, One caster's ahead, and I'm like, No, that was a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, he's just. Guys, he's just really good at the game. He just knows what's going to happen, all right? He's I have a Millennium stuff. Eye, and I'm not willing to take it out for the cast. <laughs> oh, maybe the the audio? He's saying the audio is ahead? No. That, all right. Don't How mess with me, guys. Work? Don't. Yeah, no. Don't mess with me, guys, all right? I know we had technical difficulties, but, like, come on. Jeez. <laughs> uh, all right. We see the attack token go back over to Winding God. Uh, hired gun and jagged butcher chilling on the field. We'll see if he does go ahead. I don't imagine Sejuani's going to come out because we don't really see any good targets for the Sejuani. This is a is definitely a very good board to play the Citrus Courier if he is able to maybe attack first. I highly doubt those two units will survive though. Uh, so he is going to wait for the Genevieve to come down. And now, yes, here comes the Sejuani. This is a much better target. Yeah, and this one of Tusk Raider uh not gonna do a whole lot this late in the game i think that you know riptide rex is a little bit more likely to be sort of your warning shot play here on turn eight and that should more or less end the game uh zinc elemental not going to be able to find sort of a good time to play this relentless pursuit from here on out as this board is going to get destroyed by the riptide rex on the following turn and winding god's going to have a pretty good attack into this decimated board of zinc elemental you know he's going to have these scouts down he's going to have that uh you know, Riptide Rex on board, and that represents a big unit, and it's also going to be six damage pushed through at face with the, or five damage rather pushed through at face with the Rex. Yeah, and yep, we're going to see the tr uh, the trade with the Genevieve here, followed by the Island Navigator, and yeah, Riptide Rex, man, just so oh my god, whenever you can get it down on turn eight, like the very first turn possible, it's app oh my god, it just absolutely wrecks your opponent's field, and yep, you said it. It's happening, and not only that, it's, yeah, it's just straight-up lethal, and there is nothing Zinc Elemental is going to be able to do about this. So, holy bejesus, we have a super quick game one here in the finals of Duels of Runeterra, number 12. I was going to try to, wow, I was going to try to say that in Spanish, and I couldn't even think of it. I'm pretty sure that's Diezy Dos, right? Yeah, did I say that right? <laughs> Duels of Runeterra, number 12, uh, first one down and out already, and that was, yeah, that was a hella quick uh, match or sorry game number one there of this match yeah that was uh that was a quick one and you know i'm glad that riptide rex has found his way into the meta that was a card that we all thought was really cool when it came out and we just were like you know it's kind of hard to find a deck that this fits in we were kind of forcing it into things and like now that warning shot has kind of become like a common place acceptance in main decks we're seeing it a lot more often and it absolutely rips through these demacia decks yeah, it's funny. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'll i be the guy to say it. You know, when Riptide came out, we were like, that's like a meme card, right? Like, that's not a thing. And then everybody's like, nope. This is basically just in any Bilgewater deck as the 8-drop, and it's pretty game-changing. The problem was we were, we were too scared to experiment with it. We saw a crocodile and a shark with arms, and we were like, that's cool. Let me try one in the deck. And no, you need three in the deck. You need that to be your win condition. I'm just okay. So we have uh, is this the collusion deck, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Darrowing. So you kept saying decimate, like decimate the opponent's board, and all I, I kept thinking about isn't, this isn't the collusion. This is just Bannerman Callista. Oh, He's got a queen in there as well. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So 
Uh, yeah, I, I kept hearing the word decimate, and I was like, where is this aggro deck? And <laughs> we finally uh, see the aggro deck come out. Looks like a wicked solid first hand, and this is actually, uh, he's playing Elise. Zink is playing Elise. I was not aware of not that. Not only that, he's playing three Elise. There's only one Darius in this deck and a couple copies of Draven. And how many Harrowing? Three Harrowing. So six Shadow Isle cards in total. No Atrocity going to come out of a list like this, but, you know, there, yeah, it makes sense not to run the Atrocity if you're only on one Darius. I'm just not sure if this is necessarily a decision that I agree with. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree with that either. I mean, Elise is definitely good. She's always been one of the best cards, you know, in the entire game. She's been played since day one. But I don't know if it's worth not playing additional Darius. Like, uh, Darius is just so good in this deck, uh, even without Atrocity. So, and now we see the the Elise already just getting tapped by this Laurent Protégé. I probably butchered that too. But uh, we do see the Draven hit the board. And we'll see if this Draven, as we've talked about, so many other times in this tournament can get some value trades going off here with his quick attack so this is the second time that we've seen winding god play his callista as a defensive tool we saw it a little bit earlier on in the day he played it so that his opponent would so that nola gold specifically would be forced to throw a spinning axe onto it onto a precious pet and that ended up potentially costing the game because of what he discarded but getting that small advantage out winding god has shown that he's not afraid to play with this callista as a blocker and i'm wondering if the whole reason that it's in this deck is because it is that you know four attack three mana unit that can block onto things like this basilisk rider yeah, and it did look pretty good for Winding God, and but now all of a sudden this is going to be a pretty, pretty sketchy block on the side of Winding God. There's nothing that really lines up too great. I guess you consider, yeah, I was just gonna say consider putting the Callista in front of the Basilisk Rider just to just get the trade. Uh, but you are gonna get a free trade with the Draven, getting some value. You are gonna get some damage pushed through with that Basilisk Rider, and you're starting to feed this harrowing now this uh this harrowing is starting to get some units in the death pool we would like to see possibly like a legion grenadier come through so that it gets a little bit more damage a little bit more value there but uh we'll see what happens we do have this iron ballista hit the field and that's definitely a good card you want to see for that early game harrowing yeah it is a little bit awkward just because you know the one it, by playing this Legion Grenadier, he doesn't actually have access to the Harrowing Mana on the next turn. I think, yeah, this is going to be the Ranger's Resolve coming out, going to let his Warship and his Laurent Protégé win, or live, rather, and Zinc Elemental, throwing off that Darius emote, does not look happy about what he has seen. And as I mentioned, he took himself off the Harrowing for the next turn, so he's got not a unimpactful setup. He does get to just play out every unit in his hand, which does include the Demolitionist Disciple combo. He's going to feel pretty good about this, but he's got to deal with Winding, Card's board, Winding God's board relatively soon, or he's not going to make it out of this one alive. Yeah, and we do see uh, a Legion Grenadier now. I'm, yeah, this is this is gonna look. This harrowing, if he can get it off, oh. is gonna be amazing. And he's got so many. This oh was a weak top deck from Winding God, but it doesn't matter. Zinc Elemental gets a little bit baited by his Basilisk Rider and is just wow. going to get concerted striked here. And you know he's going to be able to get down critically this Crimson Disciple because if he didn't get mm -hmm. that down then Winding God had lethal on the open attack. Although I think doing the math because of these war chefs, I think he still has lethal on the open attack anyway. So this Sithria, what I thought was a weak top deck, is actually just going to present lethal for Winding God. Wow. And what a, what a turnaround on the side of Winding God, really. I mean, because this if Zinc is able to get a harrowing off at any point in this game, it, it's probably just game over with what Winding God has in his hand. Uh, he, hmm, I don't know, what is that? He's at 10. All right, we do see the Crimson Disciple come down. The Scythria is just going to go a little bit wider. So he's guaranteed, uh, oh, actually, no, that's guaranteed game. That's the, damage, yeah. Yeah. And there's... Uh, oh, he picked up Noxie and Fervor. Wow. I think that, I mean, that just means that Zinc Elemental probably wins then, right? He gets to Noxie and Fervor first to survive and then throw out that Harrowing on the following turn. Yeah. And I think this was the only top deck he had available to him to bail himself out of this situation. Yeah, this is an amazing top deck. This is definitely going to get him to live to the next turn. Uh, we see the Bright Steel Protector drawn by Winding God. That ain't going to do nothing. Not going to help him out here. We are going to see the harrowing. And yeah, there's just going to be too much stuff coming down, hitting the field with this harrowing. Lots of overwhelm. We're going to get a basilisk. We're going to get a ballista. We're going to get a legion grenadier. Uh, oh, God. Just so many units. And that is going to be game. And that's good to see because you know what? 
Now we're heading into game two, tied up 1-1, and we have ourselves a match. Blinding God has had a very fortunate series of top decks throughout this tournament. So, you know, it is it does make a little bit of sense that Zinc's going to get the return of the favor. <laughs> um, and, you know, I just did not think he was going to be able to pull this one out. And, oh my, okay, so this man top decked the Harrowing and then still missed Allegiance on his Basilisk Riders. Could this Wait. be the opportunity that Winding God needed to pick up the win? Wait, what? All right, I, all right. Whew. Wait, is this... Wait, I'm two? pretty sure Winding God lives because the Basil... He, how are you going to top deck a Shadow Isle card and then still miss Allegiance? This is why Elise sucks. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know why he's playing Elise. No way. You were, hold on, you were talking about how you like the Elise at the side. I don't want to hear this out of you. I don't, I don't, listen, I don't <laughs> like it. I'm just saying I don't hate it. It's a, it's an overall good card, but like, holy crap. So I, well, he lives, but can he win? Because he does have a yeah, Grizzled Ranger. Yeah. yeah, he just plays the Grizzled Ranger next turn and attacks for lethal. There's nothing on the side of Zinc. Uh, you know, Zinc Elemental has a Harrowing and, a, and an Axe in hand. We know he's top decking a Shadow Isle card, so there's no removal suite available to him. We know it's not going to be like a Decimate or anything. Winding God. Oh my god, Zinc Elemental living and dying by the top of his deck gets the perfect card, then gets the least perfect card, wow. and is just going to be falling here. Winding God living at 3 HP. And that. I. Ah, oh, man, that is a... Yeah. I am so conflicted about the outcome of this game and specifically the way things have ended. Well, it's like... It's like party, part of you is like, well, harrowing is stupid, right? So we don't want harrowing to win. <laughs> but, then, but then on the flip side, we're like, well, damn, that's some pretty shitty RNG. So maybe we actually did want that to win because that's just a feels bad man moment. Um, wow, so feels... Really bad for Zinc Elemental. I thought, you know, I was calling it, thinking we were going to go 1-1. It definitely looked like it, but god damn, missing both allegiances feels so bad. Oh, apparently there's an audio delay on me. I'm just going to hang up the Discord call and call you right back. Okay, so there is a, there is actually an auto delay. Okay. All right, everybody let me know how things are working out now. Yeah, it was the uh, probably that first disconnect that kind of messed things up a little bit. Yeah, that one just threw everything for a loop. But we should be back now, hopefully, on the same page. I'm telling you, man. That's the world. You know what? If there's one reason why Rito should make spectator mode, this is why. Right before finals, we get a stinking disconnect. What is this? All right. So we see we're going to have the Ezreal Karma now versus uh, this Demacia deck. And we'll see if... I mean, listen. Winding God has performed incredibly well. Incredibly well right now versus this... Uh, uh, versus pretty much every opponent that he's played against it. And actually, I just this just occurred to me. Whose stream are you watching? Uh, both of them. Oh, you are? Okay, because I believe that Zinx is a little bit ahead of Winding Gods. Yes. Okay, so I don't watch that one. Okay. And ignore that. Act like it's not there. Or pull up pull up my stream. That way you can see both hands, right? Yeah, that's fair. So I think that might have to do with the delay on the voice, too. Because I was like, there was an instance where I was like, wait a second. How does he know that that card is going to be played? Like, what is this? I saw my I, eyes I going in two different directions yeah. looking. <laughs> I can see into the future. <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to make yourself look better. Oh, I get it. I get Me? it. <laughs> Why? For clout? Leibard? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, yeah, this should theoretically be a bad matchup for Ezreal Karma. But like I said, this, uh, I don't know, man. He has just played this deck to perfection from what we've seen in the top 16 so far. Looks like he is an interesting hand for sure. He has three jump bumps, so I'm curious to see how he plays with this. I'm pretty sure it's going to be something along the lines of play a chump wump, play a chump wump, play a chump wump, or instead it's just going to be a pass understanding, you know, your opponent does have this Fleet Feather Tracker. You can get the sort of kill out of them first, then play the chump wump. And luckily the Fleet Feather Tracker is going to die here. You're going to take a lot of damage for your troubles, but Zinc Elemental's, you know, pretty low on cards, does have this single combat still, uh, but not really any great targets for it. And that's why we've kind of seen single combat get phased out of these Demacia decks. You're playing a much lower to the ground aggro deck. You don't have things like Scythria the Bold and Garen that are going to overstat your opponent's units and make good use of the single combat. Of course, it can be used to dodge removal, which is going to be very relevant in a lineup like this. And the Moose is now on the loose. Isn't that just fun to say? Yeah, it is. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really jiving with it at first, but now... I'm feeling it. And you wonder why I love saying Morpidorp. <laughs> it's just the way you say it. Like, it's three different words. Morp. 
a dorp. <laughs> That's how we roll. We add that to our vocabulary for the day. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> as long as we're going off about pronunciations. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. So we see, uh, let's see if we're going to see another leveled misfortune. We got the early scout unit coming out here. And God, it would be uh, pretty nice to see two level two misfortunes on the day. Would it? I mean, I, I feel like I, I don't think I've ever seen that animation go off and then somebody not immediately die. Um, which is, you know, it's kind of cool in its own right. It's kind of like that death sentence. I almost wish they would like adjust her animation a little bit to just be like, the game's over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's basically what it means. That's the game ending screen. It's like if this was a single player game, that's the that's the end with the credits rolling. <laughs> so this is going to be one HP only left on this misfortune, which does mean Winding God's probably going to go for an Ezreal play into that mystic shot. Of course, we do know that single combat is in Zing's hand. Going to take this one off the table. And this moose is big enough to stat check everything. Going to be able to take that one out. And that does mean that this uh, misfortune is going to get to survive just a little bit longer. Are you watching the other stream again, Boulevard? No, I'm on I'm on Winding God stream. Oh, really? So it must just be a delay, um, like just with our internet, like your internet versus my internet, because you said it oh, okay. a little early again. Yeah. Well, is what it is. We'll work with it. We got this. And we see the single combat come out uh, from th or onto the moose, I should say, to the Ezreal, getting that off the field. Did the single combat just happen for you? Oh yeah. Yep. Oh my God. There's a massive delay here. Share your screen with me. Um, let's see. See if I can get this going on. Technology, folks. Technology. There we go. Let's do this. God, I have so many <laughs> things happening on my freaking. Oh, okay. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna make this as big as possible in Streamlabs because I gotta share the Streamlabs screen with you. Okay. All right. This is fine. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Oof, okay, we made it, boys. We made it. Oh, well, hold on. I gotta get rid of this now. Ah. Oh, wait. Nope. There we go. Is that still good? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Oh, God. All right. So many things. I don't want to break anything. <laughs> so we see the thermo beam come out finally to kill this misfortune. So unfortunately, unfortunately, we're not going to see this level two misfortune. I was really pulling for that. I, I really wanted that to happen. And we can see here, too, like this is this matchup is going terribly for. Uh, Winding God right now, those chump lumps putting shrooms in his hand isn't really going to do much for him right now. Yeah, you're not going to love that. This isn't the kind of deck where the shrooms really matter as much. There's not that much draw power coming out of some uh, deck like this. It looks like we are going to see this get excited lined up onto something else as well, discarding a shroom. And, you know, if he can make it to that turn 10 and get a rummage, then, you know, he's going to have a lot of refuel. But I don't think he's got the mana to just sort of play out the cards in his hand. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This deck is a house fire. He's got all the gasoline available. But if you don't find that match in time, you know, everybody's going to get out of the house. Is it? I, I don't know why, but now when you say house fire, I just think dumpster fire. So <laughs> that's what... Look, there are a couple of decks in the format that are, that are dumpster fires. Yeah. This is not one of them. No, this is definitely not one of the dumpster fire decks. Oh, man. Yeah, and it, it doesn't really look like Winding God could do anything. Um, it looks like he's going to take... This L, and we do have ourselves a game, folks. So although I thought Zinc would pick up last game, it looks like he's going to go ahead and take the victory in game three here uh, so we can head into a game four, and he does not get 3 0 So we still only have last round being the only round uh, in the top eight that has a 3 0 in it. Um, okay, so it's not impossible that Winding God rummages into lethal. Stop. There are two get excited in his deck. I think he already tossed one away, but it's not necessarily out of the question. Stop. Okay. Okay. I mean, All he right. does have another run. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. All day, man. I first it started. I can't get to see the freaking casino deck. Now I'm thinking he's going to win last game and he gets some stupid result on Allegiance. Gotta hate RNG, man. RNG is just not liking me today. I mean, this is the power of karma, but it looks like he's not going to be able to find it this time around. Nope. I just I see to... I see this behind the scenes. I see you updating the game count right now before things are. I, over. I know. He, I know. <laughs> you still got a key guardian in hand. There's more drawing to be had. You put that scene away. I'm literally scared. I'm literally scared to like update this now. Like, all right, we're, we're staying at zero, guys. <laughs> like until until this is over, it's not over. We're gonna wait and see what the results are here. He only has to do two damage. 
I don't think there's any line of play here, right? No, it would depend on what comes off the Key Guardian, but I don't think there's enough mana available at that point for Winding God to actually pick up a win. Yeah, Static Shock only represents four damage to the face. Concussive Palm, if you could spread it out over multiple units, then yeah, we'd see something. We'd have a game on our hands it's here. That's not how the card works. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a four-mana fast Yone. <laughs> I will say, though, he was very close. Uh, I think he was just one, you know, he, if he had one more life, Winding God actually lived there. Yeah, that actually was a lot closer than I thought towards the end there. Uh, but he is, again, from the beginning, we kind of knew that this is a bad matchup for the Karma Ezreal deck. But now, I mean, listen, Winding God put himself on three chances to win with this Karma Ezreal deck. Three. So if yeah. there's any deck that you want three chances to win a game with or and you win the tournament, it's this deck. Yeah, and, you know, this could come down to the Karma Ezreal Mirror again. You know, we don't think that this has a phenomenal matchup against the Darius Harrowing. Uh, scouts it can be a little bit of a rough matchup. That's something that a lot of players use to farm the PZ Ionia. Yep. Now it looks like I would assume that we're going to get into the Dari Darius Harrowing here, or maybe uh, Zinc just wants to lay it all out on the line and take this Karma Ezreal Mirror. You know what I just realized might be happening? Because now that I'm watching both streams, um, I think Winding God might actually be playing on a delay is what's happening. That's very possible. Yeah, because it's actually significant. It's not like a five-second internet thing. It's more like a 15-second. So I think he has it on the minimum 15-second delay. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. No, we have but solved the we mystery, out. Now I'm spectating through you, so <laughs> yeah. everything should be kind of lined up. I just wanted to provide people some insight. I feel like everybody was confused as to what was going on there. So <laughs> is it delayed? Is the audio screwed up? What's going on? So we are jumping into game four here, and Zinc Elemental off to a... Uh, pretty good start with a one drop, but as I feel like we've seen every time Precious Pet comes out, that's the Thermo Beam taking swift care of it. Yeah, and honestly, a little bit of a weak hand here on the side of Winding God. Will of Ionia has a lot of fair uses in this matchup, but it definitely feels a lot more fair in this matchup than it does in some of the other ones. Darius is really only like the heavy hitter that you want to get something like this down onto. And Zinc Elemental actually going for the open attack, deciding that... You know, it is a little bit risky to go for this Iron Ballista potentially, though I'm hard-pressed to think of a punish in Winding, God in Winding God's deck for this, uh, you know, playing out a unit and then going for the attack. I guess Concussive Palm is, is the one thing that you would be worried about, as that does sort of stun the one unit and then give you the blocker for another, and then you don't push through any damage that turn, you lose a unit. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that that's what Zinc Elemental was playing around. It's a pretty good bet, uh, not going to lie. We'll see what happens here for uh, whether or not he decides to... Okay, he does decide to play the Crimson Disciple uh, with the, his leftover mana, so it's going to go back over, and the Legion of Terrors, it's going to go back over to Winding God, which... Winding God... Okay, I was going to say he doesn't have any units. He does have the Karma now, but he doesn't have anything to really play to the board, which, I mean, sure, he has a Will of Ionia to prevent some damage, but... Uh, actually, he also has a Static Shock, so I definitely expect to see the Static Shock... Come down on the saboteur and legion rear guard now, or legion demolitionist, I should say now, uh, to prevent that one extra damage coming out from the saboteur. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to be that or the thermogenic beam. I did like the pass from him though, not wanting to throw out that thermo beam onto the disciple one because you know your opponent could have a transfusion and that completely blows you out of the water. Also, you want your opponent to commit a little bit more mana so that you don't get dodged by something like that Noxian fervor that we see in Zing's hand. And really, I'm not mad at either play. I think this one kind of indicates that he's going to will of ionia this iron ballista uh that's a pretty good bet yeah it's going to prevent the most damage as it currently stands uh i don't see him just letting this damage through uh okay wow so he okay i was gonna say he's gonna go for the chem punk then but god that's a little risky don't you think a little bit but you know luckily zinc's not going to have mana for the noxian forever at this point so you mm -hmm. actually are safe to get off this thermo beam the problem is that now that you're staring at basilisk rider you would much rather yeah. throw your thermogenic beam at that and you do still have to be you know at least a little bit cognizant of the possibility of a transfusion because if that comes out not only is the unit going to live but you're going to take two damage for your trouble can we just can we just can we just state a fact that he did he did actually hit the allegiance on the basilisk rider here so rng now working in his favor uh, for Zinc Elemental here, we're not going to see a very, very sad loss as far as that's con concerned. I still just think it's so risky going down to nine, right? Like, yeah, sure, you have the Thermo Beam, but anything like that Basilisk that came down or anything else in his hand, he's got the Harrowing, he's got to Decimate. Like, nine's just so low, and I don't believe Winding God is playing Health Potions, right? Or is he? Uh, I believe he's playing one. No, he's not playing any. 
Yeah, so I mean, maybe if you're playing health potion, that might make sense to me, but it's I think he's kind of just going all in and maybe thinks that, okay, I need to do this in order to win the game. Yeah, so we have two facts about Winding God. Number one, he is one of the best players in North America. Number two, he plays fast and loose with his life total constantly. Yeah. Well, hey, life is a resource, right? Your next yeah. self is a resource, and that's something you got to utilize, and it looks like that hurts. Uh, this is definitely not looking good all of a sudden for Winding God. This look, this is looking to be a very quick victory by this Darrowing deck, uh, meaning that we will go into a game five if that's the case, but we'll see if Winding God can uh, crawl back in this from two health. I've seen weirder things happen in this game. Yeah, I mean, so he now his opponent's completely tapped out. I think this is about as good as your Thermo Beam's going to get. I like the attack with the Chem Punk. Your opponent blocks with one of the units, thinks they're safe. Oh, it's fine. I can go for, you know, the open attack on the following turn. And then you Thermo Beam that. And Zinc is a little more inclined to sort of, you know, play for, I mean, play for this block because he doesn't want to get a spell stolen out of his deck. But unless Winding God can find a deny off the top, he is just dead to this Decimate. Yeah, and it's looking like that's exactly what's going to happen here. And even if he doesn't die to the Decimate, he's going to have to stare down a Harrowing on uh, one of the turns coming up. There was a Grenadier that also died. So if he does play Harrowing, the Grenadier will definitely die unless uh, Winding God is able to find some sort of heal somehow. Uh, we do see another Basilisk Rider over there as well. So this is this is looking rough. Yeah, there are a lot of options available to Zinc Elemental in terms of lethal on the following turn. Uh, Decimate, probably the safest one, as a Basilisk Rider could just get stopped out by, you know, a couple of different things. Will of Ionia, Concussive Palm, things of that nature. So Decimate likely to be what comes out, and Winding God does still have two Rummages to try and find something. And we, yep, there's the Thermo on the Ballista, and we also even see a, uh, it's going to be... Okay, yeah, no, he's, he's tapped out. All right, so we also see a... Wow, a Noxian Fervor off the top, and... Yeah, that's going to be... That's just too much damage. Uh, that is not anything Winding do, or Winding God is going to be able to do about this. He is going to go ahead and stun the Basilisk, but it's looking like the Noxian Fervor is going to come down. And as you guys can see in the hand above, now that we know, <laughs> now that we know what's going on, uh, <laughs> it does look like Zinc Elemental is going to go ahead and take this one home for 2-2. Two, two. We are going into game five. God, am I excited to see five games out of this. And this is, uh, again, good on Zinc too. Taking Winding God to game five. If he's able to take this from the one and only, the God, Winding God, uh, this will be a pretty cool sight to see. Yeah, and now we are going to get down into that Karma Ezreal Mirror. And there is nothing scarier than going into a mirror match where you think your opponent is better than you. And, uh, you know, not to discredit Zinc Elemental, but to think that you're as good as Winding God is a big claim. And he's got a chance to prove it here. You know, if you pick up a tournament win, that's just step one towards picking up a couple of tournament wins like Winding God has done before. And I think that this is... I'm trying to look at these deck lists and figure out who's actually going to be favored here. I think that Winding God is a little bit favored because the Chem Punks do play a little bit better into this matchup. The Claws of the Dragon and the Eyes of the Dragon don't really matter as much in these non-aggro matchups matchups and looking at the spell lineup you know both players have get excited we do see the one retreat out of winding god that could come in a little bit big later on to dodge some removal and keep his Ezreals in a safer state and i've been talking all day about like you know i'm okay with seeing bannerman i'm okay with seeing deep sea monsters now i still i don't think there's ever going to be a time where i'm okay with mirror matches with ezreal karma but we have seen a <laughs> lot in the top 16 uh, and it's coming down to the Ezreal Karma Mirror Match again here in the finals for Game 5. Yeah, and actually, ooh, this is... Oh, Winding God actually just going to pass. Let this attack go through then. Yeah, I guess he's just not even going to play the Chem Punk, which would have gotten Thermo Beamed almost certainly. Eye of the Dragon, that Attune coming in big here for Zinc Elemental. Now he's going to play it that he's got the Spell Mana Bank, though he doesn't have any protection for it. I don't think he's going to will of Ionia this. Okay, okay does decide to take the the mystic shot okay so all right we're going back over to zinc elemental here we see a get excited off the top by winding god and an open attack honestly every damage is going to matter at this point in this matchup um you know every two damage i should say that's one less proc of ezreal that you need to get off um and we do see the early deep meditation coming out from zinc uh spending the that was actually a five mana meditation correct Yep, there was no... And there's this cool thing with Eye of the Dragon on the field. If there's no Dragonling, that means that the Deep Meditation was full cost. Oh, that's a good point. 
<laughs> hey, I think you might be on to something there. <laughs> that's, that's a little caster tip from me to you. <laughs> oh, it's the little things, man. It's the little things. <laughs> Yeah, but this does mean that Winding God's going to be able to Thermo Beam back onto this Eye of the Dragon. And I'm a little curious to see if Zinc does want to fire off some of these zero mana Thermo Beams. It's not a card that gets a lot of value in a matchup like this. Once we get into these later turns, it's a little bit scary to tap yourself down to zero mana. You know, there are some bigger punishes coming out of Winding God. He can play a Karma if you tap out. He can play an Ezreal if you tap out. Kind of let that one rock a little bit. But it looks like he's actually going to hang on to it in order to, you know, one mana left on this Kempunk does mean you can just take that out with that last Thermo Beam. But the Kempunk is going to connect and steal a Rummage. That's a big pickup for Winding wow, God. Wow, that's huge. And we do already see the uh, the Karma in hand as well. So if we are able to make it a little bit later here to Karma being enlightened. All right, no, so he's actually going to go ahead and use it now. Probably realizing he does need to draw into you know targets for Ezreal as quickly as possible. Get this Karma Ezreal combo rocking and rolling as quickly as possible. So he does decide to go for the rummage and does draw one of the Ezreals. So this is a little thing, and I'm gonna. It's gonna sound like I'm nitpicking here, and I kind of am because that's what our job is. But Winding God, instead of playing the rummage from his own hand, played the rummage that he stole off the Kempunk pickpocket. So if Zinc was paying attention, he now knows what spell was gotten off that Kempunk and doesn't have to play around additional removal or copies of deny or something like that. You could also argue that he doesn't want him to know what else was in his hand. I mean, there's there's multiple ways of, of going around that, but I, I do tend to agree with you. I think that it's probably better to have any possible card have been stolen versus a mystery card from your deck. Yeah, and like it's a very, very minor thing, but I mean, yeah. not much is going on in this game for us to talk about otherwise, so I do have to just kind of point that one out. <laughs> what do you mean? We have two sick Karma Ezreal decks, man. I mean, there's like it, it, kind of, it feels weird to say that because there is... There are things happening on screen. We do see Winding God with his back a little bit against the wall as Zinc Elemental is getting a wider board here. These Claws of the Dragon, this aggro plan playing for him. And this is sort of reminiscent of the Karina Control Mirrors where we would see like one player would try to go for this spider plan to take over a game. And that's kind of how these uh, Claws of the Dragon are functioning. It's, you know, I get down these units, I get to push through a lot of damage on you. And we've talked a lot about how any damage that you get through with units in an Ezreal deck feels like cheating. And Winding God not running as many units as his opponent does look like it's starting to catch up with him here. Well, the one thing I will mention, though, is that because Winding God is not running many units, that's obviously an, another reference to the Karina matchup. There's going to be less targets for Zinc Elemental to actually level the Ezreal. So there's kind of pluses and minuses to both sides of the coin there. I'm curious to see which one actually ends up being the better strategy. It does look like Zinc right now is uh, definitely in the lead with three units on the board, threatening some more damage. Yeah, and Winding God has not found sort of the impactful cards in this matchup. Will of Ionia is something that we've talked about as one of the worst cards that you can have. It looks like he is actually just going to go ahead and even get rid of a Get Excited because it's just not going to be, you know, you don't want to lose that amount of card advantage in a matchup like this. Going to throw out the Concussive Palm, but that's still eating five damage. He is down to 10 life already. Things are not looking great for him here. I don't actually know what the Ezreals are currently sitting at. Of all the things going on, that is the one thing I've kind of lost track of. I don't think either player is leveled up. They might be uh, just a couple off at this point. I know we've seen some static shocks coming out already. Yeah, and losing that Ezreal is, is definitely pretty pivotal here, especially not only just because he doesn't have the Ezreal and his opponent does, as we can see in his hand, but that's one less elusive blocker as we see another Shadow Assassin hit the field here. And... Yeah, these units are really starting to be a problem for this uh, Karma Ezreal deck on the side of Winding God, and there's just not enough removal uh, in his hand right now to really take care of it all. Will of Ionia is not really what you want to play on any of these uh, these followers. Yeah, and we had talked about this Will of Ionia being really bad in this matchup, but I mean, you've got units that are just going to get replayed for free by Zinc Elemental. You've got, you know, Shadow Assassin that's going to draw him a card and dig him a little bit closer to your doom, and we do see Zinc have the Karma Ezreal combo in hand, while Winding God is stuck with just the Karma and a pretty bad suite of removal. Yeah, just more stuff to kind of just stall out. He's got the stun. He's got two uh, recalls there. Static Shock will be able to take care of one of the Claws as well as one of the Shadow Assassins. So that does feel pretty good. Uh, this will definitely help Zinc keep the tempo up right here. Uh, but again, that, that Static Shock, I do think, keeps Winding God in the game just a little bit longer here. We'll see if... Ooh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think this one is actually just over for Winding wow. God. He doesn't have a good answer for this Ezreal. Can, you know, Will of Ionia, but it's just going to come back down on the next turn, and it's really not going to accomplish too, too much. 
uh, the aggro plan from Zinc Elemental playing out, and he has gone a little bit too wide for Winding God to deal with. Wow, so we might be seeing Zinc take down the one and only here in just a minute, depending on how this next turn goes. This is... Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much forced to play this Static Shock just to avoid uh, too much damage on the following turn. He does need to draw some options and find, I don't know, anything, something. I mean, <laughs> there's not much that his hand can do right now to take care of this Ezreal. And another Static Shock is not quite going to do it. He might be able to draw another card at some point, but just not quite going to do it. Yeah, just a little bit too slow, and now Zinc, if he wants to, could just play this Karma to start the turn. Wow. That's going to be a leveled up Karma. He doesn't have the capabilities to, you know, fire off a bunch of burst spells and end the game. He is going to go for the attack with this Ezreal. That does mean that, wow. you know, the Mythic Chop's going to come out. There's the Surrender out of Winding God. Falling here, not able wow. to pick up two tournaments in a weekend, and Zinc Elemental is your Duels of Runeterra North America 12 champion, taking down the one and only Winding God himself in a very tight five-game series. Wow, that was a hell of a game. Very happy to have seen it gone to five games as well. Uh, Jesus, that was crazy by Zinc, man. And we saw him play a little bit uh, in the top 16 as well, but just especially especially considering he was down. Uh, he was down 2-0, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah, he was down 2-0. He clawed his way back in that game. That is absolutely nuts. Uh, good to see from Zinc. He three owed Winding God's Karma Ezreal. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This I was like, supposed to be the best deck in the format and one of the top players, and you just three O his best deck in the. That's absolutely yep. insane. Zinc Elemental absolutely deserves the win of this tournament. That I can't. If that was a top four match and then Zinc lost in the finals, I would cry for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in a word, yeah. Uh, in, like I was saying earlier, like that's the deck on the side of Winding God that he wants. For those three games like okay i'm up 2-0 i got three shots at the best deck in the game to get this job done i lost the game no big deal i got two more nope doesn't even matter he ends up just getting wrecked by zinc and that is uh very unfortunate uh, i gotta give winding god props though listen he might have lost but like let's be honest this dude like it's a card game and he's in like every final ever everywhere i mean who else can say that um, there are some other very good competitors out there that I'm sure could uh, be up there in the conversation with Winding God. But as today stands, it's currently Zinc Elemental. He's the man of the day, the person of the day. Uh, pretty awesome to see this sweet, sweet Rune Terra action go to five games here yeah. in the finals. And this was a stacked top 16. Just looking at Zinc's path to get here, he knocks out 4LW in the top 16, takes out Blazin Asian in the top 8, takes out Ophelios in the top 4, just to meet Winding God in the finals, smacks him around 2, takes his win. And, and all of his matches went to 5 games. And 4LW and Blazin Asian are pretty good competitors. They're regular names that we see in these tournaments. 4LW won something. What did he win recently? Was it... Uh, believe it wasn't it the thing that you cast or did he win jam fest last weekend i think it was i don't know man <laughs> so many tournaments these players are winning so many things this is why we need a document where i could keep track of these things because i know that you all won something i just don't know what it was uh he won that tournament on that day for that thing back a little yeah. while ago so <laughs> but zinc, zinc ran a marathon man he played 20 games through this top 16 yeah he oh yeah wow that is <laughs> that's a lot of root terror I, I gotta say that is a crap ton of root terror yeah, but, uh, and even even if he 3 0 in the last two rounds, that's still 26 games of Rune Terror this man played in a row just to finish it off in a Karma Ezreal Mirror against Winding God. That's an absolutely phenomenal run by this player. And, all right, so what are the takeaways for today from the tournament? Um, Zink is a god. Yeah. Uh, he interacts with me on Twitter a lot, too, so I like him a lot. I love this guy. Cool. He's, I'm his biggest fan now. Um, <laughs> other takeaways, we really haven't seen a lot of Brahmanibia. What happened to that deck, you know? Heimer Vi has sort of fallen out of the meta, and I don't know if that's specifically the reason or if it just doesn't pair into these aggro decks as well as Karma Ezreal, but I do kind of want to go back and look at this top 16 and see how many Heimer Vi there were because it's not a lot. Karma Ezreal has come out as the top dog. We get a balance patch in a week and a half, and if Ezreal's not on there finally, ooh, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to be like a little heated. I might like complain about it on Reddit as a reasonable <laughs> human being is going to do. I see now I'm a little interested because in the PCS tournament that we casted, there actually was a ton of Vimer High. Er, yeah, because, well, Vimer because High. Was that's, banned. Oh, sorry, never mind. That's because it was banned. So unfortunately, we can't really get a good representation of that. So yeah. uh, what I was going to say was with Gems um, and Haunts, them casting EU, I'm curious to see what they saw as far as any Vimer 
Vimer decks, you know, in the um, in the EU side of things. So if that's the case, and we did see Vimer on that side, I'm curious to see why that was EU versus NA. But I have a suspicion that we didn't see a lot over there either, um, at least from the games I saw during Top Cut when I was in the EU cast uh, in the chat. Didn't seem like there was too much Vimer going on there either. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that's a takeaway. I do think that... Uh, I've been talking about this Darrowing deck a lot. I very much like the deck, but I do think that we've seen it be a little bit more inconsistent in competitive play. I think that on ladder, it's a bonkers deck that will rank you up super fast and consistently rank you up. So you guys want a cool deck to play on ladder, hit up some Darrowing. But in competitive, it just seemed like we saw so many allegiances missed. We saw so many inconsistencies of drawing Harrowing when it's needed. Um, I don't think I don't think the deck is nearly as strong as some people might think it is so i mean so on ladder you only need to maintain like a 55 percent win rate to consistently climb in tournament 55 percent win rate that's not going to do it for you eventually you know you are going to stumble two games in a row that's going to be a loss you're going to do it again you're going to pick another loss and just you need a higher representation you need a higher win rate in tournament and yeah this mm -hmm. I mean, so the winner did have the Darrowing, Har the Darrowing deck in his lineup. You know, Zinc <laughs> Elemental did have that one available to him. So I, I did win the tournament. Yeah, it, it did win the tournament. So it was in the winning lineup. It's definitely still a, a, a good deck. I'm just not... I'm not convinced that it's necessarily one of the three decks you should guaranteed take to a competitive event uh, after seeing, you know, all the games go out today. We did see a lot of variants of it, though. It's crazy how one deck has so many different variants with really just one region in noxus right um yeah so that was definitely interesting to see but overall a, a really a pretty diverse metagame is a very uh diverse representation of decks today yeah patch 1.2 was pretty cut and dry pretty much everybody was bringing some kind of pz ionia some kind of failure with noxus and then sea monsters around at the lineup every now and then you would see you know i'll bring pz ionia scouts and then some other shadow isle deck uh typically we would see either it was mostly indoor spiders uh, what we were seeing out of that and now it feels like things are a little more open you have a lot of variation in the lineup you don't necessarily have to bring three aggro decks this darius deck just slots into every lineup pretty well because it has a good spread of matchups and we saw sea monsters once in top eight it didn't work out for that player didn't make it to the finals but i think that that's another like reasonable thing and we saw we consistently see these shadow Dial shadow isle decks pop up that just like have a good spread of matchups across the board and i think that is sort of the slot that the Dar the darrowing deck is kind of fitting right now yeah, definitely. So I think, uh, again, overall, such an awesome, awesome tournament. I had a blast casting today with you, as always. Um, so fun to interact with chat. You guys in chat were uh, freaking awesome. And I, I'm just going to do it. You know, you <laughs> aggro is poo-poo, okay? I will give you what you want in chat. <laughs> I will give you I can't not because honestly I don't have a problem saying it <laughs> but um anyways yeah I, honestly chat all day awesome good to have you guys on the stream players as always you know I just gotta thank everybody Kuma amazing for putting this on and I gotta shout out to Kuma for any TOs that might be watching thank you for providing <laughs> the deck list links and not the deck codes mad props oh my god it makes life so much easier and um one of the biggest takeaways that you missed from this tournament boulevard the big one of the biggest takeaways all the words that we learned today come on man soliloquy shellacking plethora repost i didn't learn i used half these words that doesn't mean that i learned them today these are vocabulary no no i'm saying we as a group oh yeah this has been your grammar lesson for the day <laughs> and and everybody you are no longer allowed to say more actually i, I gotta well i'll confirm this with morpador first but it's morpador all right it's three words all the time every day all day but um all right your time to shine with the shout outs because we all know how awesome you are at the shout outs yeah as always as always shout out to me man <laughs> out here doing the damn thing getting it done you know, marathon of casting week in and week out. I don't care. I'm a stallion. I'm a racehorse. I'm a purebred. I, I was going to say thoroughbred, but I actually texted that to a friend the other day and misspelled bread. I spelled it like B-R-E-A-D. <laughs> so that's another word for you. I am a thoroughbred, not like a thoroughbred horse. So uh, that's going to catch up to me. I'm full of gluten. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> shout out to the TOs, man. If you guys want, follow me on Twitter from the BLVD. That's where you're going to get all the casting information out of me, where I'm going, what channel I'm going live on every weekend, as it does tend to kind of hop around. We're a little inconsistent. There's no like set schedule for a lot of things yet. But yeah, you know, follow me out over there. I have a link tree, a tournament tier list, all that. You can get all that information on Twitter. If you don't want to follow me, that's totally fine. Um, I'll just remember it for next time. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> he's he's watching he's watching chat <laughs> um and uh yeah again shout out to everybody that uh had to that took the time to play in this tournament um congrats to zinc congrats to widening god it's not a win but dude you're constantly in the finals the top four the top eight whatever i i don't know man you're just good at this freaking game so um everybody i just put up a link to my youtube if you want to check it out i know some people were mentioning it in the chat earlier i put up a lot of these games too you will actually see how i separate them out on my youtube um each round so you'll probably see some of those go up this week for duels of Runeterra as well as some of the other tournaments i cast if you guys want to go ahead and check that out but um until next time everybody as always stay positive i hope shit just works for you guys and have a great evening peace out all right, guys, that's it for this Duels of Runeterra. So we will catch you back here probably in another two weeks or so with uh, a lot of that footage from uh, whatever goes down then. I don't know. We're going to have a Duels of Runeterra 13, I imagine. This tournament is amazing. It keeps growing week in and week out. So always good to see some new faces too. So if you are hearing about this tournament for the first time, do not forget to check out the Discord link in the description below. Hit up the Discord. Find them on Smash GG. Whatever it is you need to do to get signed up and uh, get your decks ready, you definitely want to be participating in this tournament. So, as always, everybody, stay healthy, stay positive. I hope to just works for you. Peace out.